Hello students, myself Noor Lhuda, a student of AG Public School Chalura from class 8 P. And today our topic is related to microorganisms. Before starting the chapter, we all must know what are microorganisms. Uh, it has a simple definition that the organisms which we can't see with our naked eyes. But leave that aside. First, we should know what is the meaning of microorganisms. So, micro means minute. And organisms means living things. So minute living things are called microorganisms. They are most commonly microscopic and can be seen only with the help of a microscope. Some organisms can be seen with the help of a magnifying glass too. But most commonly they are microscopic and can be seen only with the help of a microscope. Basically, microorganisms are classified into four major categories that is bacteria, fungi, algae and the protozoa. Today we are going to discuss about bacteria. Firstly, let me start with the history of bacteria that bacteria was invented by Andy von Leeuwenhoek but he didn't thought the term bacteria so he called them animal clues. Here, a question rises in your mind. If Antimon Leeuwenhoek didn't have the term bacteria, then who gave us the term bacteria? The term bacteria was coined by another scientist, namely Ehren Berg. And the father of bacteriology is Louis Pasteur. Here, another question rises in your mind. What is bacteriology? Bacteriology is the study of bacteria. And why do you call Louis Pasteur the father of bacteriology? Because he was the first person to study bacteria and gave us a lot of information about bacteria. That's why we call him the father of bacteriology. Basically, bacteria are classified into three types on the basis of shape and size. First one is spherical, second is rod shape and third is spiral. First one, spherical. Just like our earth is, it's flattened at the poles and bulge at the edges. That very shape, the bacteria is called cocci. Now, second one, the rod shape. You all must have seen rods, which we call water pipes. I will give you an example of an insect, that's earthworm. That's in the shape of a rod. That very bacteria, we call the bacilli. But, if the bacteria is rod shaped and is curved, then we call it vibro. Moving towards the third type, that's a spiral. We all have seen spiral notebooks. In that shape, that very bacteria is called spirilla. But if the spiral rings are very close to each other, they are too much tight, then they are called spirochetes. Now, moving towards the nutrition of bacteria. Nutrition of bacteria is of two types, the heterotropic and the autotropic. Heterotropic means which depends on other organisms for its food. The autotropic means which makes its own food. It may be chemosynthetic or it may be photosynthetic. I will give you an example of heterotropic that animals depend on other organisms for their food and plants make their own food by the process of photosynthesis. Autotropic, it must be chemosynthetic or it must be photosynthetic. Now, the structure of bacteria. Outermost layer is called the capsule. After that, there is the cell wall and it's made of peptoglycan. And the last one, that is the cell membrane or the plasma membrane. Now, inside there are the small fluid-like substances called the cytoplasm. Remember one thing that the cell wall of fungi is made of chitin and the cell wall of plants is made of cellulose and hemicellulose. Now, inside the bacteria, there are small jelly-like substances known as the cytoplasm including the nuclei and the ribosome. Outside on the capsule, there are small hair-like projections and a flagellum. We help in the locomotion of bacteria. Moving towards the bacterial diseases. Bacteria causes various diseases in plants, animals and other organisms. Some are typhoid caused by salmonella typhi, TB such as mycobacterium, tuberculosis and other. And other. Bacteria are useful to us in various uh, ways such as a bacteria known as lactobacillus converts milk into curd. This was all about bacteria. Any question related to bacteria? Yes. yes. Uh, you said that uh, the cell wall of fungi is made up of chitin. So, um, uh, the cell wall of bacteria is made up of what? Peptoglycan. 
It's not related to uh, bacteria, but uh, you said that uh, uh, fungi is a microorganism, but uh, as far as I know, we can see uh, fungi by our naked eyes, but the microorganisms are those organisms which we can't see by our naked eyes. Then how is fungi a microorganism? It has a reason that fungi are also multicellular and they are also unicellular. My, uh, multicellular fungi can be seen with naked eyes, while as unicellular can be seen with the help of a microscope. Thank you. Yes. Can you name the bacteria which don't have cell phone? Mycobacteria. Oh. You say that antibiotics are, um, antibiotics cure the disease of bacteria, but uh, not why yeah, the most important Why? Antibiotics damage the cell wall of the organism and kill it. Virus has no cell wall presence, that's why it's not effective against viruses. I have a question. Yes. And then the bacteria who lives in our gut. Mr. Bacteria. Yes. Now, to cure bacterial diseases, mostly we use antibiotics. Antibiotics dissolve or damage the cell wall of our organism to kill it and protect us. But antibiotics have no effect against viruses because virus has no cell wall present. As I already told you, antibiotics dissolve or damage the cell wall of our organism. When virus has no cell wall present, so antibiotics won't be effective against viruses. This was all about today's lecture. Thanks for being so patient and giving me your precious time. Thank you. Thank you.